Hi, this is Dr. Tony Cooper, and this is Life Without Baggage. In this podcast, I'll help you develop a stronger sense of self, develop firmer boundaries, and also learn how to lean into the gentle promptings of the Holy Spirit who can help you navigate life. My purpose is to help you get free from the emotional baggage that weighs you down so that you can be fully alive and engaged in life. My media includes audiobooks, self-help books, videos, and this podcast. Just a reminder before we get into today's episode that this is not a substitute for medication or counseling. If you're having thoughts of harming yourself or another person, or if this material triggers you, please contact your doctor or a mental health specialist to help you with your concerns. Now here's today's episode. Welcome to this week's episode of Life Without Baggage. Today I'm going to be talking about power to change. I was thinking about some different things related to change and power. And when I was in my 20s, I tasted yogurt for the first time. And I really liked it. So I was wondering, wow, where do you find this? And I don't know how I had managed to get to be that age and never taste it. So um, my friend at work, I was teaching school back then, said, well, you can buy it at the store or you can make it at home. It's like, wow, you can make it? And back then I, I cooked a lot. And so she said, yeah, well, I'll bring you a culture and then you just mix it in and follow the recipe. And then you just keep using those little containers of yogurt and add it to the next batch every time. So I was pretty impressed with that. That was the first time I had done anything like that, that that small little container added to just plain old milk could create delicious yogurt. So something small could create a big change. Thinking also about how words create change, you probably have heard about the research where people experimented with different sounds, different frequencies, different volumes, and how it affected the growth of plants. And of course, loud, angry noise is not good for plants, whereas a lot of the research has shown that gentle, kind of mellow volumes that aren't extraordinarily loud do promote plant growth. And another study you may or may not be familiar with, this isn't as clear cut, but there has been some research by a, by a Japanese scientist named Dr. Emoto that the way that water is spoken to, the volume, the intensity, how angry or how um, gentle affects the way that crystals are formed. So there are a lot of different examples here from food, from plants, from nature, that there is an impact from something small to create significant change. And especially today, I want to focus on how words create change. I've talked about over the last several months, the importance of the words we say to ourselves. From time to time, I talk about the importance of using God's word to see significant answers to prayer, to see significant change. So I'm going to bring some of those thoughts together today, and I'm going to pray some things over you for whatever it is that you would like to see changed inside of yourself. Maybe there's a loss you've been through. Maybe there is a um, situation that causes you a lot of sadness, a lot of anxiety. So I'm going to decree some blessings over you today. And you can just let those wash over you and engage your faith to receive it. Now, this is based on a couple of different scriptures uh, of why this is helpful. Isaiah 61, 11 talks about the self-fulfilling power 
of God's word. I get that out of the Amplified Bible. That's my preferred translation. So there is a power that fulfills itself. If you think about like how a seed is planted and there is power inside of that seed that when it's mixed with water, that there is life inside of the seed and the seed produces after its own kind. So God's word produces transformation. It it is self-fulfilling. There's also a verse in Hebrews chapter four that talks about God's word is living and active. I use the example of the yogurt culture that it's kind of alive and it creates change and God's word is alive. So when we listen to God's word, when we read God's word, we want to respect the power that's in it and then yield that power to produce things that are good for us, peace, joy, to see answers to prayer. Although today we're going to focus more on changes you would like to see in yourself. And then one other scripture in Jeremiah chapter one talks about God watches over his word to perform it. So when we are using God's word for ourselves or in a situation, when we decree God's word, then we are inviting him then to act on it. He honors his word. So the more we know God's word, the more we can use it to our benefit to grow, to change, to find peace, to find strategies. So if you're able to get comfortable, get cozy right now, and I'm going to pray some scriptures over you and whatever you need, Lord, I ask you to minister to the deepest core needs of this listener as we proclaim your word. So I thank you, Lord, that you restore my life, my enthusiasm, my joy, my purpose, that you give me a whole heart, that you take the fractured pieces and you can put my heart back together again, regardless of what I've been through, that you can knit me back together When life tears me apart, you can knit me back together according to your original design and purpose for me. That you can strengthen me in my innermost being, the parts of me that no one else knows about or sees. You can strengthen beyond what I've ever been before. You can strengthen me Your word, your life in me strengthens me, even in the midst of difficulties. Regardless of the storm, you make me strong. Lord, thank you that even in the midst of whatever my life circumstances are, that I can know your constant, unbroken companionship that your voice inside my spirit, your Holy Spirit speaking to my spirit gives me direction. This is the way. This is the path of life. Go this way. And I want to acknowledge you. You strengthen me so that I can break with habits and addictions and practices that are bad for me. You're the one that empowers me to make those changes. I speak restoration over this listener in their heart, in their mind, even in their body. Lord, you tell us in Psalm 68 that you are the God of healing and repeated deliverances, that you strengthen us, that you carry us, and that your mercies are new every morning. You never get tired of me. You never run out of power or peace or strength. And you make the way 
where there seems to be no way. So those scriptures were out of Psalm 23, Psalm 86, Psalm 139, Ephesians 316, Isaiah 4110, Isaiah 30, Isaiah 42, and Psalm 68. So I just want to make a couple of comments. So one of the things I think about is that the Christian life is supernatural. So when we live completely dominated by our natural circumstances, by our automatic emotions, by our way of thinking, that we're not really accessing our supernatural power and peace that's available to us once we receive Jesus as our Savior. You don't want to be dominated by your natural tendencies, your automatic emotions, your automatic reactions. We still have them as human beings, but we don't have to be controlled by them. Throughout each week, I talk to people about, yes, what you've been through is real and what you're struggling with, it's real. But each day we can wake up and decide, what am I going to make my focus? What am I going to make my anchor? Am I going to be dominated by old ways of thinking and old habits and emotions that maybe take me to a bad place? Or am I going to focus on the truth of God's word and declare it and live out of that place until I see more of what I want happening in my heart and mind? And then even if the circumstances don't change, I can experience more joy, more peace, more hope, and that overflow makes me a positive influence for others. I want to invite you to leave me a voicemail to say how you have dropped some baggage. Now, the link I'm going to put in the show notes, you can leave me a 90-second message on how you dropped baggage based on maybe something you learned in the podcast or a prayer that we had in the podcast or some other bit of information or suggestion that you found useful. And then I plan on sharing this in a future segment where I include the messages that people have left. So if that's something you would like to do, I would love to hear from you. And let me know whether it's okay to share it. So that's the episode for today. I hope that the the time of prayer strengthened you, gave you a little more hope and joy. So this is Dr. Tony Cooper, and this is Life Without Baggage. Thanks for listening. And if this helped you, share it with a friend. Talk to you next time.